Aaron. You know, last year's EventX was so popular that we had to bring it back again this year. Now, if you weren't at Conclave last year to experience yourself, the content that you're about to hear was chosen by you, our CMPs, through your votes through the app. And we're going to hear from four thought-provoking 10-minute short, short talks. Now, these presenters weren't notified until late last night about their selection after we closed the voting in the mobile app. And what they're going to be sharing will inspire and elevate your morning. Now, our first speaker is a, a big man at 6'8", and a, a big thinker. He's got some big ideas for helping you today by presenting his message, The Five Reasons People Fear Elephants and Donkeys. Straight from Scottsdale, Arizona, please help me welcome speaker, author, and advocacy expert, casually known as the big guy with the bow tie, Mr. Roger Rickard. So, how many people in the room have ever been bitten by a mosquito? An ant? Stung by a bee? How many have ever been bitten by an elephant? Now, I must share with you, I was speaking uh, with the Farm Bureau one day and I asked that question. And they turned around and a lady put her hand up and afterwards I went over and she said, well, I'm a veterinarian who used to work at a zoo. <sighs> so it can happen. And with the Farm Bureaus, I never asked the follow-up question, which is, have you ever been kicked by a donkey? Because those on the farm have usually been kicked by a donkey. But I share that with you simply because the two animals, the elephant and the donkey are the icons of our political parties. We often talk about elected officials being political animals. They're represented by the elephants and the donkeys. So in the US system, the elected officials are either elephants or donkeys. And as such, oftentimes people fear talking to the elephants and donkeys. So today I'm going to share with you the top five reasons people fear speaking with elephants and donkeys. But first, let's go with the definition of advocacy. Advocacy is defined, and an advocate is defined as a, be, a person that supports a cause or policy. Now on the policy side, that, those are the people that work with government affairs. But if all of us support different causes, we're an advocate. So you're an advocate. And so think to yourself, have you ever supported a cause? Whether that cause is the homeless or the helpless, the elderly, the sick, the poor, for women's rights, for gay rights, for veterans and those that support the fight for freedom. We all are advocates in our simple way. Come with me back to January of 1989. Ronald Reagan is sitting behind the Resolute desk in the Oval Office, and he's about to deliver his last address to Americans. And he says, we the people tell the government what to do, it doesn't tell us. We the people are the driver, the government is the car. We the people tell the government where to go and by what route and how fast. We the people are free. So, the preamble to the Constitution in the United States says, we the people of the United States to order to form a more perfect union. It doesn't begin with I the king or me the president or we the Congress. It begins with we the people. It is our role and responsibility to somehow participate in the political process. And more important in the political process is the governing process. 
The First Amendment gives us a right to be able to speak to elected officials. We should use that right. But people fear talking to those animals. They fear talking to the elephants and donkeys. So now I'm going to talk to you about the five reasons people fear elephants and donkeys. Number five, contentment. People sometimes are just content, they're happy. Status quo is fine with them, so they're not going to participate in any way, shape, or form with dealing with any of the elected officials. So number five was contentment. Number four is apathy. They're ambivalent. They could care one way or another. Doesn't matter to me what they do. That's not going to affect me. I think if anybody's been paying any attention in the last couple years, we realize that there's a lot of things that really affect us. That was number four, apathy. Number three is powerless. People fear they have no power anyhow, so why bother? And in fact, a recent Rasmussen survey indicated that the general U.S. public believes that Congress never listens to them, and only 11% believe that what they say makes a difference. One out of 10 of us believe that what we say can make a difference. Conversely, the Congressional Management Foundation did a study of members of Congress and asked them what was important to them. How do you make a decision? And their answer was face-to-face -face constituent meetings by 94%. So we have a huge disconnect here, don't we folks? One group thinks nine out of 10 people can make a difference. The other one thinks one out of 10 of us. So one of the reasons we fear is we're powerless. So that was number three. Number two is the lack of knowledge. People sometimes fear, I don't know enough. I can't go talk to them. Well, let me give you a little secret. Elected officials know about this much about almost everything. And if you take the meetings industry, you know this much about meetings and what goes on and the influence. So you have a lot more knowledge just about this topic, let alone anything else, than they do. And just like any athlete, you train, you practice. So those that need to do a better job of advocating need more skills. They need to understand what creates that influence. So that was number two. Number one is anxiety. The fear itself. I, I, I can't go talk to them. I see them on TV. Don't be afraid. You know, they put their pants and hose on the same way that the rest of us do. Birmingham's own Condoleezza Rice said, power is useless unless you can turn it into influence. And if we go back 99 years ago, the suffragists made a huge difference when they got past the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, the women's right to vote. That was 99 years ago. Last Tuesday, the results of the congressional elections give more women in Congress than any other time in our history. So the old saying, you've come a long way, yeah, that's great, but we have a long way to go. We've got a lot of things to do to create the difference. You have the ability, you have the power, you control it with your voice, the ability to be able to communicate and elevate your cause or your concern. You have the ability to talk to the animals. You, in fact, are an advocate. My name's Roger Rickard, and I am an advocate. I hope you join me.